Eventual Consistency Solving Problems at Scale So most software projects start out just like this. There's a database, there's an API, and these together become the back end. Maybe they're running in a virtual machine, maybe they're running on a physical host, something small. These will provide a service for a front end and users. Doing this made sense at the time. Uncertainty about the success of the project, starting small, was reasonable. And then, as a pleasant surprise, things are successful, and we have more users than our current architecture can support. So we proceed down the standard evolution of growing a backend. We take our database, and we max out the virtual machine for it. We take our API, and we split it up into containers and we put a load balancer on the front of it. This becomes our new backend, and it works for a while. As growth continues, cracks again begin to form in this architecture. The principle that lets us grow beyond this medium size is called eventual consistency. Up until now, the consistency of information in this backend is essentially real time. That is to say, the moment the change occurs, it's essentially available to any other component in the back end. Unfortunately, at this scale, if we want to keep growing, we're going to have to radically alter the way information flows in this system. While using a large distributed service like YouTube or Twitter, you may have already noticed the effects of eventual consistency. You may have noticed view counts vary between your devices. Also, that comments don't appear for maybe a couple minutes to an hour in some cases. These are side effects of eventual consistency in practice. Okay, so what does this look like on paper? There will always be a database at the heart of it, but this database will be supplemented with caches. APIs, or microservices, will interact with these caches. Some sort of load balancer will distribute traffic to our microservices. This becomes a regional backend, one of many. Time delays between cache, database, and regions allow the whole thing to work. The system is carefully transacted so that the end result will be precise, but that end result will only occur after a certain amount of time has elapsed. Building time into architecture makes it very durable. It allows it to survive peak usage without failing. It might slow down, service quality might be compromised, but it will not fail. It allows data centers to ramp up to account for this added peak usage. It also allows data centers to throttle down to cut costs. To finish things off, we would need some sort of front end DNS regional lookup, and then of course our million users. How did it come to this? We've gone from our simple single server app to a behemoth running in a data center. There's so much to know and so much to keep track of. Hats off to the engineers that keep the internet running. <laughs>